Hello and welcome to this week's CareerWise, the show that leaves no stone unturned on the rocky slopes of the teaching life. Today, we take a look at how you can control your career by focusing on your own CPD. We catch up with one ambitious teacher who kick-started her career with the GTC's Teacher Learning Academy. I will get so much more out of it than if I just sit back and wait for things to happen. To discuss CPD in more depth, we're joined in the studio by Anne Jasmine from the General Teaching Council, Patrick Nash, Chief Executive of the Teacher Support Network, and Alison Kitson from the Training and Development Agency for Schools. Then we'll hear from some teachers who'll tell us about their recent CPD experiences. Even though you've been teaching for many years, it's like, um, it's like a new start. You're starting all over again with fresh ideas. One of the government's big new ideas is for yet more emphasis to be put on career development. But what effect can starting CPD early really have on your career? We went to speak to one young teacher to find out. Lorne Charles is a young teacher and enthusiastic runner. She's decided she's going to control which way her career goes by taking on her own professional development. When I started running, I could barely run up the hill and I would never have dreamed that I could enter races and, and, and do all these things and over the course of years I was able to get to the level of fitness that I was competing in races and, and I think that the same is true with CPD. You know, you don't have to jump in at the deep end and, and decide to sign up for a, a GCSE class or, or anything like that, but it does take self-discipline and you do have to want it. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the arguments for and against women being leaders in the church. Okay. So in your blue Lauren is an RE teacher who is now in her third year. She realised very early on that CPD could be used to take control of her career. Although teaching often seems like a very straightforward linear career structure, you're a teacher, you're a head of a department, you're a head of a year, actually that's not true and in fact there are lots and lots of different ways that you can develop your career um, and it CPD should enable you to explore those options and have a think about what does interest you. At the end of her NQT year, Lauren got involved with the GTC's Teacher Learning Academy, or TLA, a way for teachers to gain recognition for their professional development work. I got involved with the TLA at the, towards the, the very end of the NQT year. It came along in about April. It was a, an opportunity for teachers to use work they're already doing um, and basically write a report on what they'd done and what they'd got out of what they were doing um, and have that accredited by, by the, the Teacher Learning Academy and the General Teaching Council and have that recognition as something that they could then point to as um, evidence of, of professional development. We're moving towards much a much more school-based situation with CPD where the work of teachers is seen as very valuable research in itself and really at the heart of what professional development is about. So I was particularly pleased to work with Lorna's and NQT on the TLA submission. Because there was about 20 of us in the school that did that, I had contact with people who are members of the senior management team, people who are in departments that I rarely work with, people who are not tutors in my year group, people that I wouldn't have otherwise got to meet and we had something in common. The kind of buddying that took place was really quite interesting and to see people sharing ideas and learning with each other for a very real need to sort of say hey what we're going to do in our submission and how we're going to go about about it was was really very refreshing. And so even in the staff room now even if I have nothing else to say I can talk to those people are you considering doing another one and what would you do it on and it's just a way of, of keeping that that network going and, and, I, and I really really feel that that's the most important thing. Lorne has recently started a master's degree in philosophy and she's looking to use it in conjunction with her TLA work. What I might want to look at is bringing some of the things that I've got from my Masters into yeah. the classroom and certainly that's going to be applicable where we're um, introducing some new Year 11 units and where we, we have been obviously thinking about 16 to 19 and so hopefully when, when we start doing a bit more of that then I'll be able to, to actually sort of bring the two together as it were, sure. the, the Masters and our sort of in-school mm -hmm. work. You decided not to work on the Inquiry and Development Group 
didn't you? That's right, yeah. And was that because of the MA work? Yes, I mean, I felt that the MA work was going to be quite demanding and that yeah. I just couldn't do both with integrity. So I felt that because I've chosen to do that and I've paid for that, that's got to take priority. That's why I've taken on the Masters, because I feel that you know, I will get so much more out of it than if I just sit back and wait for things to happen. You know, if you if you don't if you don't take control and you don't bother to take up opportunities, even if things seem difficult, then then of course things are going to grind to a halt, and the, the day is just going to be the same every day. Really, you have to make change happen, don't you? Well, Lauren is clearly in complete control of her career, but to find out how us mere mortals can get the best out of CPD, we're joined on the famous CareerWise sofas by Anne Jasmine, by Patrick Nash and Alison Kitson. Uh, Anne, uh, I mean, is there a secret to doing this properly or are, um, are all teachers equipped with the potential of Lauren? The secret, if you like, is for an individual to work out what it is precisely that they think will make the most difference to them. And to use the opportunities that are available within a school, particularly uh, if you're a newly qualified teacher, through your mentor uh, and through other staff, to actually get to grips with what's out there. It's really, really important to have those conversations. Uh, too often teachers have um, been isolated in the classroom. Um, and certainly there are supports online, uh, certain websites, but particularly uh, TeacherNet offers a, a space where you can actually construct your own portfolio. Alison, how can school standards be used to decide what CPD to do? Mm. Well, the professional standards for teachers, the revised framework of professional standards, um, really outline the career options available for classroom teachers from the induction year through post-threshold, excellent teacher and AST. And they clarify the knowledge and skills that's required at those and expected at those career stages. So it really presents teachers with um, a whole menu of um, activities, knowledge and skills, um, and they can decide what CPD activities will help them gain that knowledge and acquire those skills so that they can make progress in the way that they wish. What are the areas where I lack confidence? What are my aspirations and therefore what are the kinds of experiences that I need? What are the kind of CPD activities that are going to help me? So I think it really is a tool for teachers and our intention is not that these standards are something that, that are done to teachers. They are the teacher standards. They're to help them and help guide them in their career and their professional development activities. Well, Patrick, I mean, not all uh, teachers watching this are kind of coiled springs of ambition waiting to get to, to the prize. Well, what if you, if you uh, aren't that kind of outwardly confident go-getting person, but yet you still have strong career goals? Well, that, I, th I think it's a really good point, Peter. We get thousands of calls from teachers on Teacher Support Line every year who want to explore their career development, and that is increasing to the point where for teachers under the age of 35, that is now the key issue that people are phoning about and what they are looking for is not not complaining about what isn't working but actually to do exactly what you're describing which is to um, have a safer space to explore these issues to to feel out where they might be in terms of their development and then to have the confidence to come back into school and perhaps start to have those dialogues with people they perhaps felt a little insecure about having it within the first place and I think that that's an important part of the support that's available it's not the whole story but it's part of it. Well rather depressingly a recent GTC survey found that 19 percent of teachers found that their CPD needs weren't being uh, met. What should a teacher do in, in that situation where this uh, lovely ideal world of development doesn't appear to be open to them, Alison? Mm. I think that's very disappointing and there are standards now which relate specifically to a teacher undertaking CPD. It'll be in um, teacher's job descriptions. So we very much see uh, CPD as an area that teachers can expect to engage in increasingly um, and that's what our work is all about. Uh, Patrick, I mean, uh, for those nearly 20% of teachers that are not able to write their own CPD ticket, what should they do? Some of the reason why teachers are disappointed is that perhaps the, the focus in their school is very much on competence and perhaps not on building confidence and indeed capacity. Personal development, and there's a whole range of, I think, activities there, needs to go alongside 
good professional development. And I think one of the ways that can really be enhanced is to really good coaching and mentoring within schools. I think we've still got a lot to do to teach the skills of coaching and mentoring to teachers, to leaders in schools. I think we're moving a long way, but I still think we've got a long way to go. Great. Well, listen, thanks very much indeed to all three of you for coming on CareerWise today. Well, we've found out what effect it can have on how to use it correctly. But with a plethora of CPD out there, the question is what to choose. We spoke to some teachers to find out their experiences. I'm trained to be an examiner for GCSE, so I was marking scripts for the um, summer exams. And that was um, particularly useful, um, just saying that the, the work of so many other students and being able to see exactly what was required for certain questions in the exam papers and then being able to share that with the department. I did my master's a couple of years into teaching and I chose a master's degree in intercultural education looking at race, ethnicity and culture. I really wanted to learn more about you know, how to become a better teacher by teaching different cultures and so on. I became a lead teacher because I'm very interested in curriculum and developing children's learning. I was nominated by people at my head of department in the school and then all I had to do was the person who's in charge from the borough came to watch one of my lessons uh, to observe and see if she thought that I was an excellent classroom practitioner. I'm currently working with the Ealing City Learning Centre which offers a variety of CPD. So I've been offered a place on their advanced educational diploma and it's quite pioneering in its own way because we're looking at e-learning and e-pedagogy and at the moment there's very very little research in that area. Since I've become an AST, one of the key pieces of um, CPD I've had is training us how to actually coach and how to mentor um, staff and um, beginner teachers as well um, and, and introducing coaching trios within the department as well where we're all coaching each other. I actually went on a course last week which was really great. It was done by an outside consultant. It was very inspiring to see and hear other people and how they do and use different types of resources. So what I learned from him was um, how to be more creative with the children and how to inspire their thinking, getting them to really use their imagination. You feel as if you're a better teacher, even if you're not because you're researching ed in education. Being able to answer any question a student has on that exam um, has been really, really helpful. Even though you've been teaching for many years, it's like, um, it's like a new start. You're starting all over again with fresh ideas. And I think that's one of the most wonderful things about being a teacher is that it is all about sharing. And I think one of the most important things it's taught me is the idea of, of being a reflective practitioner. But also I think it adds another tool in terms of teaching and really allowing us to develop and enhance kids' learning, which is the main point, in the, really. Well, that's it for this episode of CareerWise. If your curiosity has been aroused and you'd like to find out more information about anything in today's show, do check out the website. The address is www.teachers.tv. All it remains for me to do is to say thank you to the guests for joining us in today's programme and thank you for watching. See you soon.